Hi, good morning. It's Jim from Avstar Observatory. I know it's been a couple of days. Uh, what I've been doing is just making a few observations. Um, a couple of things I wanted to talk about in this video. One of them, uh, I'm unfortunately have to talk about it because um, first of all, it's funding. Without funding, this observatory will close. It's as simple as that. And it will close at the most critical time, in my view, that it's needed. We're probably two and a little bit years away from a major event taking place, something that we've been working on for the last 10 years. And to get to this point and then have the funding dry up is absolutely frustrating for me. But we've got other problems as well as just the funding. But I will mention, you know, the link down there in the description, as it always is, where you can help support what we do here. I just hope that you appreciate that we don't just talk about these things. We've got equipment in the field globally which we gather the information from, bring it back here to the UK, process it and upload it onto the website. There isn't anyone else on YouTube, I guarantee you, that is doing the same thing. I mean, we've even gone a little bit beyond that uh, and not just, you know, built bespoke equipment for migration of the magnetic north pole. Um, you know, we've gone and built, um, you know, the Illuminox sensor which you know measures you know accurately the amount of oxygen in our atmosphere so we can monitor that we've also got other bits of equipment like uh, co2 uh, parts per million so we can measure and keep account of that so that you guys don't have to buy all these pieces of equipment because it would cost individually thousands of pounds you know we've got some unique equipment at this observatory like the muon detectors that if you were to buy them, you probably wouldn't get any change out of about £6,000. So we've got some great equipment. We're doing you know, some great research and we're at the most criticalist point and the funding is drying up. And you know, I just can only emphasise that to you guys because you're the only ones that can make a difference with it. So moving on, um, looking at the video I done last, I really can't understand why there was 20 thumbs down on it. You know, it's around about 15% of the thumbs up uh, people had come on. And, I mean, there wasn't... What I was saying in there is that we seem to have a lot of people that don't care about themselves. You know, we all know that there are events on the horizon and they can change our lives dramatically. And yet, knowing this, they're doing nothing. You know, what a lot of these people are going to do is one day open the door and they're going to have probably water halfway up the door come gushing in through the house through a flash flood and they've not prepared anything at all for themselves or the family. And that was really all we was trying to drive uh, in that video we did a couple of days ago. I can't understand the mentality of some people, um, you know, that are even not prepared to help themselves. But, you know... They are prepared to attack people that are trying to help others. That's the world we, which we live in. And, you know, I see this as well. You know, there's a lot of YouTubers on there that clearly are using uh, their subscribers in order to make a lot of money. And you can easily detect these people if you have a little bit of common sense. They talk about some similar subjects to what we do. And in a lot of respects, what they talk about is absolute nonsense and yet they are believed by a majority of people that have been following them for a long time it's like the Pied Piper has been playing his tune and they've lost sense of their logic reasoning and just followed along um, you know I'm sure that there are people out there that love fear porn and the more risk and danger you add into your video and frighten people they get a kick out of that as opposed to listening to, you know, scientific data um, based on, you know, reasonable logic. And, you know, you can't help but notice that we are living in a time where people would rather believe an, an utmost outright lie than the truth. And, you know, you, you can refer to the Bible and I'm, I'm not surprised that many people think that we are in the end times that realise these things I'm talking about. Because, you know, we are seeing the behaviours described in the Bible that would show us when we are close to those times of tribulation. 
at the end. Um, <clears throat> something else I had, uh, moving on from that, um, something else I've been looking into, you know, trying to get another angle on why, you know, global governments are trying to reduce the amounts of CO2. And I remember uh, studying um, at university and I, I clearly remember that, you know, we was going to reach at some point, uh, I think we've already passed that point, it was talking about peak oil production. Uh, they were saying that the Earth's reservoirs of crude oil was drying up. And I was watching uh, RT News, uh, I know some of you would uh, condemn me for doing that, but you know, I'll watch a couple of these mainstream medias just for a few kicks and laughs. But one of the things I did notice them talking about is the amount of uh, crude oil that America actually imports. And America is supposed to be one of the richest countries in the world for oil, other than, I suppose, Saudi Arabia. So America is importing crude oil from uh, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, uh, Venezuela, um, in various forms, so diesel, petroleum, other uh, refined products, but they are importing a considerable amount of these things. And I was just thinking that what if the, the world's oil, crude oil resources was actually drying up and becoming more scarce? And that is why countries like America and the UK and Europe are so dependent on imports and I want to say this as well it's to the point where America now is importing crude oil from countries like Russia who is supposed to be America's enemy think about that America as we know has strategically with NATO positioned all its armies around neighbouring countries of Russia which I think is an, a breach of um, a particular agreement uh, back in the 1970s, 1971 I think it is. But despite that, you know, so first of all, you know, the forces of America and, uh, you know, NATO pull their uh, weaponry right on the border of Russia, which is in itself, um, you know, an aggressive mood, move. But then ask for, you know, crude oil. It's a bit hypocritical, you know. Uh, are they such an enemy, you know, to the point where we are going to start asking them for crude oil? <coughs> Excuse me. But, you know, it makes, you, makes me wonder whether, you know, this push for 2030, 2050 to be zero uh, carbon emissions and fully electric, is it because... Uh, the, the global reservoirs of crude oil are running out and we are at that point now where we really need to do something about it because that would be, in my view, a perfect excuse to blame CO2 and therefore change the business of which we do go about producing energy and, you know, uh, running our countries and cars. Simply, if the oil was no longer there and the countries uh, was to announce it, that would cause, in my view, severe panic. But the other thing uh, I was watching, I'd, I'd, I'd done a little bit of researching, was, was an energy company that employed thousands of people globally. And uh, they had actually, in their models, included recently uh, the amount uh, of crude oil that had been not used as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and it worked out about eight percent so there was a saving of eight percent of crude oil usage during this pandemic and you know we're not out of the pandemic yet so you know that will continue to rise again i'm thinking if you're going to include things like that then was the pandemic uh pre-planned as a result to save the usage of crude oil are we i'm just giving you another idea i'm not saying that this is the case uh, because if you look at um, you know the statistics and obviously what trump tried to do when he was in power he tried to um, make america self-dependent on crude oil 
and therefore was going to do a lot more. But I also looked into what what was going to be done. They were saying that some of these oil uh, underground reservoirs that had dried up and been abandoned could be re-explored and with new techniques they could get more crude oil out of them. But the methods that I was talking about um, seemed, you know, very uh, tedious and, you know, hardly worth the point. And, you know, there was also talking about the tar sands in, in Canada, you know, that the uh, crude could be, you know, uh, that those sands could be processed and the crude oil could be removed out of those as well, which would, you know, um, in turn produce millions of barrels of oil. Again, you know, uh, not something that has been done before um, or had to be done. So, you know, I was just questioning, have we run out of crude oil? Have we reached peak oil production? And is the world now slowly uh, using up the very last dregs of crude oil? And if so, you know, how long have we actually got? And is this why there are these uh, Paris agreements and things like that in place, which are blaming CO2 for the uh, climate and everything else. Is it really because we have got no choice? We have to convert to alternative energy production and we have to, you know, convert to electric cars. But my big, big issue here is uh, if we convert to electric on everything, you know, Already here in the UK, we are struggling to cope with the demand of electricity usage. And if that is to increase, and it will do if we will turn to electric vehicles and everything else electric, you know, the demand is going to increase. Is the facilities going to be in place to uh, facilitate those needs, extra needs? Because right now, you know, we are being told that, you know, if we don't uh, reduce our you know our energy consumption with regards to electricity you know uh, the grids will become <clears throat> uh, will fail more often and blackouts will be you know something regularly known and you know another thing as well is what we're looking at is a change in manufacturing across the range you know we're seeing them make a lot of effort into producing um low efficient fridges, washing machines and utensils that we use in the household. And we was almost being told, not given the choice, being told that our vacuums from Europe, uh, this was being, this was coming from, that our vacuum cleaners uh, could only be of a certain wattage, which means, you know, if you've got a very low wattage vacuum or an electric vacuum, you know, as you know, I, I, as well as I know, then they're not that good. Uh, you know, uh, I don't care what brand it is. And the other problem is, um, you know, what about the extra pollution that will be caused when we do go fully electric with cars uh, with regards to when the batteries need to be replaced? You know, so these are some of the things that we are facing. And, you know, I was just wondering, was there another angle to it? You know, I'd like your views on it. Um, you know, so if you want to put them in the comments, you know, I will read them. So, uh, yeah, I'll just, you know, thought I'd mention these to you. You know, we're not just in the midst of, you know, magnetic pole reversal on our planet, facing dramatic climate changes. You know, we are facing a lot of other issues which are inevitably going to affect us all. And um, I just wanted to share, you know, that alternative view with you with regards to possible peak or production already being surpassed many years ago and we could be at a time where all this CO2 um, media hype is really just a cover up for the fact that we are now you know consuming the very last of the crude oil on our planet so we will have no choice that to me makes more sense than the uh, climate being affected by CO2. I think you would agree with that. So guys, I'll end the video here. Um, I'll just mention the fact that, you know, we really need to do something about the funding on our channel uh, so that we can keep our observatory going. And, you know, we are facing, you know, a critical time only 
couple of years away. So, you know, now is the time really to step up to that line. Guys, as always, you know, take care of your family and loved ones. And I'll say what I usually do. Bye for now.